Unravel Phase 4. The gift that just keeps on giving, I guess. We started off to a rocky start with the late introduction of Black Widow's solo movie, completely destroying the character of Natasha as a whole, turning her from an intelligent, courageous, and multi-dimensional character to a dumb, incompetent superwoman that barely resembles the character we once knew, and at the end, to replace her with a younger version of the character that is just less interesting in every facet that we had with Natasha. To then the introduction of new characters, storylines, and power-ups with films like Shang-Chi and the Eternals, one being a traditional Marvel origin story with a traditional Marvel trope of jokes, exposition, set pieces, and more fucking jokes. Hello, sir. Welcome to the <gasps> I'm driving. Please, get in. I'm, I'll go slow. With the latter being a boring and vanilla piece of shite with a grand vision of world building and stakes setting, but a movie that bit off more than it could chew. With character development and motivation so non-existent that I'm sure half the people watching this video now can't even name half of the Eternals crew. It's like 11 of those guys. Leaving us with Spider-Man No Way Home, a film that definitely had Marvel thinking that they were back on the right track after raking in all of that money, just to realize that Tom Holland's Spider-Man was basically playing third fiddle in his own film, for the third time in his own trilogy. Being pushed aside for the sake of fan service and spectacle, barely noticing the character was even on screen when sharing it with the likes of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, and not to mention the star of the entire film with Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. My point is in all of this is while we've gotten used to the certain grain of shit that Marvel tends to put out in Phase 4, we've gotten something completely new this phase, something completely different that we were not used to as fans of Marvel, the introduction of Marvel's Disney Plus TV shows. Making sure to tie into the movies that were still scheduled to come out, I eagerly strapped my way in to watch the first show to release in WandaVision, fresh off the ending of the Infinity Saga and ready to see where the MCU was ready to take me. But little did I know, I would have paid more attention to the show if I realized I was watching the next phase of the MCU. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness has been one of the most anticipated movies to date for the MCU, right off the success of Spider-Man No Way Home and the casually well-received WandaVision. With the ending of the Loki series cracking the multiverse into infinite possibilities and storylines of what the MCU could do, this was really the first film that will tackle that aspect. And well... I don't really understand how we can miss the mark this bad. Best season ever! <laughs> Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is just another unfocused and formulaic Marvel movie, but let's just get into it, shall we? The movie kicks off following the events of Spider-Man No Way Home, with everything looking relatively back to normal, until multidimensional time traveler and plot device America Chavez teleports into our New York City after an unsuccessful battle against a ribbon demon in the race for a mystical book of Vashanti, leading to her strangest death, with another demon still hot on her tail and wrecking havoc on the streets of New York, Doctor Strange and new sorcerer Supreme Wong, remember that? managed to subdue the creature and take a step back for a healthy helping of exposition from America. After coming to the conclusions that the multiverse is real and learning that the ruins based on the ribbon monster that was chasing plot device is based on witchcraft and not sorcery, Doctor Strange meets up with fellow Avenger Wanda. No, not to discuss the incident at Westview, but for her knowledge and help with the situation at hand. But with one of the only scenes with actual moral-based dialogue in this film, Wanda soon confesses to Strange that the demon that has been chasing plot device has been her own conscious doing the entire time, fit with the motivations of taking plot devices, powers for herself, killing her in the process in the hope of traveling to a reality where her kids Billy and Tommy are still alive and well, to live a life of normalcy. With Wanda now what might be the biggest threat to face humanity, It's even more surprising to us, the audience, when Strange comes to find out that it might not be Wanda that is the biggest threat to face humanity in the multiverse as a whole, but himself. With the race against Wanda and the obstacle of having to clear the name of Doctor Strange as a whole in the multiverse, is there enough strength in the universe to conquer the strength of the Scarlet Witch? At first glance, I want to say as I always say with most Marvel movies, I had a fun time with the set pieces. Watching two high power scaling characters like Strange and Wanda will always be a good time. You can simply do more with the characters of their power level and ability that leads to more creative fights than the grounded earthbound characters like Captain America, Black Panther, and characters like Hawkeye. And I imagine that the movie succeeded in every vision that the creators had for this movie in regards for Wanda. She's basically a god in this movie, and I imagine that's what the writers and the creators were going for, so good for them, I guess. 
And now for the negatives. What the fuck is Wong doing during the entire film? Does the name Sorcerer Supreme not actually mean anything? And was Wong just named that because Doctor Strange was erased from humanity? Wong gets absolutely obliterated every time he's on screen. I don't understand the writing of this character. I'm not going to rant too long on this one because honestly my example should just sum up of how absolutely nonsensical the writing of Wong's power scaling and his morals are in the grand scheme of things. To a point where he's been obliterated by Wanda, yet again, and is being held basically as a prisoner, with one of the temples of Karmataj's remaining sorceress from the early destruction of Wanda coming to the rescue and laying down her life for the sake of humanity to destroy the Darkhold. After a job well done, Wanda then frees Wong in an attempt to torture the remaining information that Wong might know in order to further her goal. With Wong willing to die with that type of information, Wanda then turns to the surviving subordinates, willing to torture them in order to get the information from Wong. A good strategy for sure coming from a villain, but when negotiating with a character that can see the bigger picture, it seems like something like that shouldn't work. But nope. Wong not only leads Wanda to where she needs to go, but also does the good thing of giving us the audience and Wanda herself exposition on what she needs to do in order to further her goals, compare and contrasting to the ending set piece, where it looks like all hope might be lost in his and Strange's battle against Wanda. He turns to Strange and tells him to suck the power from plot device, therefore killing her but winning the long-term battle against Wanda. Like, what? Why didn't you do that, you twat? You had her right where you wanted her and you basically didn't even do your job and got even more people killed because you couldn't sacrifice four people in order to see the bigger picture. But now you want Strange to do so? I'm being trolled. Moving on. I'm describing America Chavez as plot device because that's exactly what and who she is. You get her backstory in the form of an exposition dump that mirrors the same thing that we got in the Guardians of the Galaxy 2 with Ego's backstory. And while that might make the audience care about her a little bit more, I wouldn't say that there's such grace with her character in the film. The movie does me one better by even including in a line in the movie, quote, You have been controlling your powers. You have been taking us everywhere we needed to go every time without you even knowing. How convenient. Now, I don't want to get this confused of me thinking that her actress did something wrong. That wasn't the case at all. By the end of the film, I did care about her character, and you can tell that she was truly having fun playing the role in her first Marvel film. It's an exciting time for her, and I hope she'll turn out to be a character in the future instead of a plot device for some of our older characters. Moving on. The Illuminati were in this movie, made up of everybody's favorite discount superheroes like Black Bolt and I don't remember her name Captain Marvel and I hate Doctor Strange Mordo. With another helping hand of fan service with fan cast John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic, Captain Carter from the What If series, and the integrity of Patrick Stewart's Professor Xavier, there's not really much to say here. You either enjoy the fan service or you don't. They're all on screen for a matter of five minutes after getting absolutely obliterated by Wanda, destroying the character's power scaling and interest while doing it. But eh, it's not our universe's characters, so who really cares? Moving on. Oh, Wanda. Now, Wanda's a very decisive character in the fandom right now. You either have fans that think she's in the right with some form of moral justifications for the actions that she's been doing, no matter the harm that it may cause to others because she has a righteous goal, or you are on the side of the fandom that feels as if the actions that she's been doing from the beginning of WandaVision until the ending of this film is morally wrong, and there should be no justification or redemption arc of the crimes against the innocents, or for lust of power due to her newfound abilities. Whatever side you stand on, it is no doubt that Wanda is the villain of this movie. Which does make sense following the events of WandaVision. She's a character that is still grieving after the loss of her partner and children, and she believes she has the power to change that, and sets out on a path to achieve that no matter the cost, because no cost is too much for her at this point. But what I don't understand is the insane buff that she just received. She's basically a video game character at this point where she's the final boss, but making her way through the easiest level of the game. No one can touch her in this movie. Wong is basically a fly on the wall from her perspective. Doctor Strange spends most of the film running away from her because he is no match and dismantles the guardians of the multiverse and the Illuminati, even beating Professor Xavier at his own game of mind control. It's absolutely insane to watch, either in a good way or a bad way, I guess, depending on your perspective. But I do want to say that Elizabeth Olsen does truly shine in this role. She always does as Wanda. Her emotions of grief, rage, sadness, and determination are all on display throughout the entirety of the movie, and really captured the vision of what I would think the Scarlet Witch would really look like becoming a villain. So, 
hands off to you, Elizabeth Olsen. You were fantastic. At the end of the day, the movie set out to do what it was trying to do. Push the character of Wanda into the Scarlet Witch, and to push the idea of the multiverse and what it truly has in store for the world of the MCU. And while I had a good time with the set pieces and watching Wanda do her thing, I just couldn't grasp onto the new characters like the film might have wanted me to, and while blatantly nerfing the characters that I have been accustomed to. The ending of the movie leaves you off with another title card of Doctor Strange Will Return, leaving you with the sense of maybe a redemption arc for the character of Wanda, or more multiverse adventures with the newly confident Strange. But I can't help to think of what the MCU might even look like by then. Will the hype have worn down after the oversaturated shit that they've been putting out? Will a new generation of fans even be interested at this point without the pre-existing knowledge of its predecessors in the Infinity Saga? Those are all questions we'll have the answers to in the future, but if I had to summarize this movie up into one sentence, it would be Wanda in the Multiverse of Madness featuring Doctor Strange. If you're still here, then I surely appreciate you and make sure you like the video for more like it. This is pretty much my first rant video on the channel and with the summertime blockbusters coming up, I'm sure it won't be my last. Make sure to go check out some of the other videos I put out on my channel. Some may interest you into seeing I might have already talked about your favorite movie and or TV show and I would love to hear your thoughts on what you have to say. Subscribe to the channel for future videos so you can stay up to date and make sure to hit the comments down below of how you felt about this movie as a whole. Did you like it? How did you feel about Wanda and her character? How do you feel about the MCU as a whole and how it's going in the future? Otherwise, thank you for listening for this long. And that's all the words I got for today, so bye.